Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. Get that adjusted. All right, so I found something and uh, I've been working on it for a couple days and I want to show it to you. <clears throat> it shows that we're truly in the time. I thought the same thing last year around this time, around uh, Purim and Passover, um, but so many things are going on in the world right now. Um, I just watched a video from a guy who doesn't appear to be a Christian, but he is talking about the One World Order. Um, he doesn't mention anything about Jesus or God. And he, as a matter of fact, he says the most important thing is that we stop this, which it isn't. The most important thing is uh, Jesus Christ is the most important thing. And so towards the end of the, the, the pictures, I'll show you... Uh, his link so you can go watch it. But basically what he's saying is that on the 27th, that's three days from now, on the 27th, one day before Purim, they are going to vote. And when they do, it will become instantly a one world government uh, under the guides of who. And you'll read in Revelation who God names it and says, who could do such a thing? And I wonder if the Bible is not just actually telling us who, WHO. So let's take a look at what we've got. Uh, let's go here first. Now, there are a lot. To begin the head of the year, you can look at a lot of things. And a lot of people do. And they might be right. I'm not looking at such things like the equinox and the reason i'm not looking at the equinox for starters is this event takes place when the sun crosses the equator um and the way they know that this is correct is down in mexico i think this is where steve fletcher's at actually yucatan or something like that um when the sun crosses the equator they've built this temple and it appears as though a snake is coming down from the top of this uh, pyramid, and this marks each year the um, equinox. I personally don't feel that this is the sign that we're to be looking at as far as when the new year begins. Um, I've showed you that March 16th, March 17th, uh, there are many, many witnesses to that date. And so that's why I have built this entire timeline based on um, that date. And if it's accurate, again, it's not a salvational issue to know these things. There is only one salvational issue, and that is um, Jesus Christ and uh, being saved and going to heaven. Um, there are more than one group going a lot of people ask this nobody's left behind everybody that's in christ is gone but many will come to christ as soon as they see this event take place i can't stress that enough um nobody's left behind just like elisha saw elisha go along with 50 prophets saw this but elijah was the only one that tore off his clothes he rent his clothes and he put on the mantle that was cast down to him from Elijah and received a double portion. You could say that he followed Jesus the entire time. He followed Elijah, a representation of Jesus. He followed him the entire time, yet he wasn't taken. And it's not because he wasn't good enough. It's because God has a different dispensation for him. He is not going through the roughest part of tribulation, the first three and a half years. And again, I can't put my finger on it, but I just can't quite see a tribulation for the saints lasting, or the seals, the six seals. I can't see them lasting three and a half years. I could be wrong. A lot of people are saying that, yeah, the sixth seal, that's when we're all there. No, we're there. We're part of the 24 elders. And the reason I know this is because it says the 24 elders come out of every tribe and every nation and every corner of the world. And you don't get that out of the 24 elders. And we can guess who the 24 elders are, but even if you took 24 different people, they would not um, 
cover the entire world. The the, the nationalities, the languages, the, the, somebody would be left out if you just said the 24 elders were only the bride, and that's simply not true. The bride is numbered in there. The angels sing, but the bride is numbered 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands upon thousands. It's a number over 100 million, but under 200 million. And then we witness the seals being opened. And then in seal six, we see this great multitude that no man can count appearing in heaven. It's in order. I don't know what seals are in order or not. All I do know is that we're there before the first one is open because the 24 elders are not going to be the one. They will be casting their crowns, but they're not the only ones because they do not represent every tribe and every nation and every tongue and, and everything around the world. They simply don't cover. They can't. 24 people simply cannot cover the, the uh, how do you call the uh the dynamics or the, the, the there's a word. Is a word I'm going to forget, but they're, they're the the uh, the embodiment of everybody on the planet. Twenty four people just simply don't cover that, and so casting crowns, um, more than twenty four crowns. Well, even if you had all, I think there's five of them. If you had all five, there would be more than that amount of crowns. He's worth more than that. He came here not only to die. For remember, the bride is a select group of the elect, and they are brought out of this just like Elijah was. Uh, Elisha did nothing wrong. He's just not the bride, and he will be taken. And that's a very hard thing to teach. Um, some people just blatantly say, some of you aren't going, some of you are. That's simply not the case. At that moment that Elisha went, he was saved. He was selected by God. Elisha did go. Uh, the uh, the church goes and then the, the saints go. Because the Bible speaks of the saints. This is a group of people that receive palm branches and they have had to wash their robes white in the blood of Christ. They are as, and I'm going to probably get the name wrong, I think it was, is it Peter or Paul? It's probably Peter. Yeah, because Paul came later, he saw. Um, Peter, I believe, was the one that walked out onto the water, and as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, see, he did a little bit of something there. Um, he still, Jesus still saved him, but uh, it, it, at the end, he started to sink and drown, and Jesus reached in and pulled him back up and says, oh, ye of little faith. Still saved, right? Jesus still saved him. So there is a, a misunderstanding, I think, and it's hard to explain it's hard to it's really hard to explain because people are saying, well, you're saying there's you know partial rupture. No, not the rapture is completed at that dispensation, the end of the dispensation of grace. But a second, the very second, when you see these people go, you will not be deceived. You're not going to believe in the lie that's that uh that uh aliens took us. You're gonna say to yourself, Oh, I know what just happened. I know exactly what just happened. You won't be as the 50 prophets that witnessed the event and went up into the mountains searching for the body of Elijah. It won't be like them. You'll be as Elisha. You'll tear off the world. And then the six seals commence. And then at the sixth seal, this great multitude appears in heaven. And then the seventh seal is open. And what is in the seventh seal? The seven trumpets. What is in the seventh trumpets? The seven um, bowls. So... It's, it's, uh, which one is which, I don't know. You can argue this seal was open before that seal, that's fine. Um, I know that there's relatively, it's a relative calmness here on the planet. I mean, it's not great, but it's relatively calm because Satan is able to set everything up uh, before he walks into the temple and proclaims himself to be God. And then that's when the Jews are going to realize, wait a second, what have we done? And they are going to realize, and at the end it says they cry. They look up and cry, realizing the one that they had pierced. And that is the moment that God forgives them, and they go into the millennium. So let me keep going here. Let's see. So I do not believe this is the head of the year, the equinox. I can, I believe I can disprove that just based on the fact that we're not going to look at the, when the sun crosses over the over the equator, uh, Israel is not on the equator. They are 30 degrees north of the equator. And um, I suppose they could have scientists 
you know, 3,000 years ago, figure out when the sun crosses over the equator. I'm sure they could probably do that, but this temple was built to see a snake come down at that time. I think that the head of the year is March 16th, the day the fourth star of Algenib skirts along the horizon, only seen in Jerusalem. It just so happens to also be the day of equal parts, which it has been the day of equal parts since the beginning of time until the end of the millennium. I was able to look 600 years into the future in time and date and see that, in fact, in 2600, the day of equal parts still stands as March 16th. Um, this is also the day that I believe Lazarus died because Jesus makes a comment out of nowhere. Are there not 12 hours a day? Why does he make this comment out of nowhere? There is no mistakes. There is, there is no coincidences in the Bible. Jesus makes this comment and says, are there not 12 hours in the day? Oh, yes, Lazarus has died. He's done this on March the 16th. Uh, we are the overcomers. Uh, Wayne did a really good video a little while ago. I liked it. Um, please subscribe to his channel. I had this conversation about the 10 virgins. I have thought and stated it here that the five virgins are the bride that had oil and five virgins with no oil are the saints that are taken later. And he made a very good argument. Even I was talking with some one of my friends and he's like, who's Wayne? Um, Wayne made a very, very good argument. Now, he does his programs live. That's why his last video appears to be nine months ago, but it is not. You have to go to the live button in order to see all of his recent videos. And he made a very good argument about um, these 10 virgins. In fact, the, the, the word that, he, that caught my attention that I'd never noticed before, and again, iron sharpens iron, right? The the word that I noticed that caught my attention was he said bride. Um, uh, what is he, what do you say the bridegroom? He's not called a bridegroom until he's married. He's the groom, and as soon as he's married, he's the bridegroom. Uh, he cannot claim to be the bridegroom until he has his bride with him. So at the moment of this passage, where um. The ten virgins are being spoke of. I had uh, also, like many, had misunderstood that the ten virgins with oil are actually the saints, and they will go, and then the door will be closed, and no one can come in. There are, from what I can see, two, perhaps three, but two raptures. The bride goes, and then the saints go. I've seen a third one. And I think it's Revelation 15, uh, but I, I I don't know if it's if it's coming back to discuss just like uh, creation, it gives all the creation account and then it comes back again to rediscuss uh, in more detail the creation account later. There wasn't two creations; there were just a rediscussion. And I'm not sure in Revelation 15 it's not discussing the rapture of the saints at that time. So uh, I make this comment. I just heard an awesome teaching from Wayne. On the ten virgins, I have to agree with him. All ten go into tribulation. None of them are the bride. They all fell asleep. There's a comment in there that the ten. This is and this has always bugged me. Why were all ten of them asleep? Why did five have oil and five did not? But yet all ten had fallen asleep. And there's the answer. The bride returns with the bridegroom, or the bridegroom comes. And take, remember, wherever the groom is, there we shall be also. So if Jesus is on his way back to meet them in the air, to catch them away, and uh, they have oil, in other words, they did not accept the mark, they did not, uh, they recognized what, they didn't believe the lie that it was aliens that took them, this entire group, it's a great multitude, they, they outnumber the bride, Probably a 10 to 1, 50 to 1. I don't know. They, they're, there's a lot of them. They're, it's a huge number that no man can count. Great number. Um, I said the, the bride is a select group of the elect. I know it's been said before, but he proves it very well. He just did a very good teaching on that. So I wanted to promote his channel to, to uh, go over there and look at that. All right, let's get through this. This is Matthew. We know Matthew is speaking to the Jew. 
Most of Matthew speaks to the Jew. Most of, most of Mark speaks to the saints of the tribulation. And most of Luke speaks to the bride. Luke knows the order of all things. The bride will be in heaven first and learn all of these things previous to everyone else left here who are still dumbfounded trying to figure out what's going on. Jesus made a very clear comment here. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. What's he talking about? He's talking about the end of everything. Till heaven and earth pass. Not one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till it, be, till it all be fulfilled. So when they come to Jesus and they tell him, Jesus, your uh, your best friend is is uh, dying, and uh, we need you to come now. Remember, the messengers took off, and I'll show you this in a minute. The messengers took off two days previous. It takes two days walk to get to Jesus. They arrive on uh, March the sixteenth, the day of equal parts, the day that Jesus says, "Oh, they're not twelve hours in the day," and they say he's sick. When they left, he was sick on the fourteenth, but he died on the sixteenth. But yet Jesus, his best friend in the whole wide world, or one of his best friends, <laughs> he has died. And Jesus sits still. And we have pondered this. I've pondered this personally for years. And I've heard some, some, yeah, good, pretty good, some of them pretty lame reasons why he didn't move. Why he did he sit still for two days? Right here. The law. The law says that on Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, you are not allowed to move or walk for two days. The festival of Rosh Hashanah, you cannot do any work. It is like a Sabbath. And it, in fact, the 16th of March is the final Sabbath of the year. And the head of the year, you cannot move or do anything for two days. Jesus was here to fulfill the law. He wasn't here to break it or to change it. He was here to fulfill it. That's why Jesus didn't move. He did not move. Uh, when he found out that Lazarus had died on the 16th. So 16th and that afternoon and that evening when the sun goes down, turns to the 17th. The next day, the 18th. And the next day, he walks. He takes, he sits there for two days, then he walks for two days. And on the 20th, he resurrects Lazarus. This is where it is stated that everybody seems to uh, overlook, not everybody, some people seem to overlook. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. He's changed it by six months, exactly six months, 182 days. He shifted it from the from the uh, day the, the, the four star of Algenib skirts along the horizon on September the 14th and September the 15th being Rosh Hashanah, he's moved it back 182 days perfectly, six months, to March 17th. This is why Jesus didn't move. And that keeps happening. I keep seeing, like this 11 just keeps popping up. And, and I, I think it uh, means some. Somebody's asked me to promote uh, End Times, a voice, I don't know. Uh, uh, he walks around in the woods and he does videos and uh, uh, please subscribe to his channel. Again, there. I don't know what that means, but okay. John. Now, John is written to the 144,000, most of it. It's for all, all of the Bible is for all of us to read, but it, it is uh, earmarked for the 144,000. Therefore his sisters said unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And when Jesus, now pay attention to what happens here. Everybody says that the sisters went to see Jesus. They did not go. They were, they, they, they did not go to, uh, to tell Jesus they were taking care of Lazarus. Therefore his sisters sent unto him. They sent a messenger to Jesus. They did not go. They sent a messenger to Jesus, Jesus saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death because when it comes to God, God knows that your soul is eternal. 
your body is going to break down, uh, be in pain, be hungry, be tired, be thirsty, be cold, be hot. It's going to be all kinds of things. But the one thing that cannot happen is your soul is going to live for all eternity somewhere. It can either do it in heaven or where we actually worry the most about everyone, in hell. Your soul can go to heaven as a bride. Your soul could go to heaven as a saint. Your soul can go to to, uh, the millennium as a millennial saint. Your soul also, if you accept, if you deny those three chances that you had, can also go to hell, a lake of fire. For all eternity, a soul, once it is created, uh, will live somewhere for all eternity. So uh, accepting Jesus is the most important thing. When Jesus heard that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, and that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He loved all three of them. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still. Why didn't he move? His his best friend's dying. Mary and Martha must be beside themselves. He knows that, that Lazarus has died over there. He knows that. And yet he abodes two more days. Why doesn't he move? Because he is not here to break the law. He's here to fulfill it. He can't move. I mean... He made the law, and he's not going to break it. I guess he could move, but he's not going to. He's going to fulfill the law, and he's not going to move on Rosh Hashanah for those two days. That's why I know Rosh Hashanah is on March the 17th. And he abode two days still in the same place where he was. And after that, saith he to his disciples, let's go to Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, And now goest thou uh, thither again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? This actually occurs twice a year. It happens on March the 16th, and it happens again on September the 26th. And I'll show you that in a moment. Actually, that's kind of why I made this video. It's it's actually pretty incredible. Um, It's exactly six months and ten days. Six months and ten days. Um, she made a very good argument about the departure being first. Like I showed you last time in the video, you see that? Showed you last time in the video, I wrote like a fire backwards. But anyway, um, from the perspective of planet Earth, right now we are that which withholds Satan's ability to reveal himself. We are that reason. We, the Holy Ghost is here and it lives in us. We are the reason why Satan cannot reveal himself and will not reveal himself until we are gone. And by all appearances to this planet, not to us, but to this planet who people are still here, everything the Holy Spirit will be removed. There will be a great falling away. There will be a great apostasy. There will be a great departure. You can use all of those because what we'll have left is a planet that has no Holy Spirit in it. And I think that moment is going to last for about three days. And then after the three days, I think the Holy Spirit will be poured out again and a great multitude that no man can count will be saved. Let's see here. So she makes a good argument for this uh, departure. She explains all of that. uh, Saved by grace, 18. All right. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there be a fall, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed in the son of perdition. So some people say, no, this falling away has to happen. This is everybody that's. that's a Christian, they're just going to forsake God and walk away from it, and and they're not saved anymore. Salvation was never yours in the first place. You can't give it away. You. That's why he uses the, the parable of the sower. 
That seed, once it starts to grow in good soil, you can't unplant yourself and put yourself in bad soil. First of all, who would want that? Second of all, it can't be done. You cannot move a plant. You cannot lose your salvation any more than that plant can unplant itself and get out of that good soil and put itself into rocks. It can't be done. The terminology once saved, always saved is just a term. But the fact is that once God saves you, the question is, were you ever saved? That's the question. But once you are saved, no, you cannot lose it. So, this is what they'll use to state that everybody loses their salvation. No. This group of people that are saved are going to leave this world. It's going to appear as a falling away from everybody's perspective on this planet. There will be no one on the internet, no one screaming out that this was all planned and this was God. There will be no one. It will be silent for days. People will just be silent. Nothing, everything we know will be gone. And then the Holy Spirit will come back and it will be a great... Um, a, a, a gathering it will be incredible the the work that the holy spirit does after the bride is gone so we're gone this falling away apostasy a departure is we are gone if they've translated it several different ways and then the man of sin will be revealed we are not there yet i have not seen this person that's ruling the world yet and now ye know what with holy and, and if you go down in Second Thessalonians just a little ways, I just highlight it and, to, and it's right down here at the bottom. Just keep going down to Second Thessalonians and and he says after he makes all that comment and you're and you're asking yourself we're falling away. What is that exactly? Does that mean that we're going to lose our salvation? Does that mean that uh, you know, all the churches or everybody? You, have you seen the revival going on right now? Have you seen the revival going on right now? People all over the world are coming to, to, to God right now. The Holy Spirit is working a great work. There's no great falling away happening right now. There's a revival going on right now. The people inherently know this event is about to take place. And so we go down a little bit further, and what do we read? And now you know what withheld that he might be revealed in his... What withheld? What withheld? We did. We withheld it, and it cannot be revealed until we fall away first, until we are removed from this planet, and all the spirituality that's on this planet is gone. And then, and only then... Can he be revealed? We can sit here and guess all day long who the Antichrist is. I personally don't waste my time with it. Um, it's, uh, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not going to be here to see it anyway. And uh, apparently from what I hear, the Antichrist will be somebody that nobody has guessed. But he'll just appear out of nowhere with all the right answers. And so, now you know. Now you know what, what it was that withheld that he might be revealed in his time. Now you know. It was the bride. It was the bride. It was the Holy Spirit in the bride. The bride was removed. And now you know that he will be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. He's already here working. You see it all over the place. The who, the uh, the, the, the balloons that are flying around, the, the wars and rumors of wars. I'm going to nuke you. No, I'm going to nuke you. This is all a ploy to cover up what's about to happen. They don't care about you. You have all these countries. Oh, I'm going to go after you. Oh, I'm going to bomb you. I'm going to do this. Oh, I'm going to turn over my sovereignty of my entire country. I, even though I hate you, I'm going to turn over my sovereignty to my entire country to an organization that can tell me what to do. They're all working together. They're all working together. This, all, this is all a scam. None of it's real. They're trying to cover up what's about to take place, the rapture. Only he who know let him let us will let uh, until he be taken out of the way. So um, Satan, Satan is waiting for that moment. He's waiting for that moment. He's being held back right now by us. He's being held back by these videos. He's being held by, by us talking out in the world, warning people who otherwise have no interest in any of this kind of stuff and it, it, if you're walking, if you're just if, and, and it's, it's so simple. 
you're saving them from the lake of fire down here. That's what you're saving. That's that's what God is working on, saving them from that. They can go into any of the dispensations. They can go into the bride. They can go into the saint. They can go into the millennium. The one place they don't need to go is to hell for no reason at all. But that's what Satan's trying to do. He's trying to make them look at something else. Just It's a sleight of hand. They're, he's a magician. Look over here. Look over here. And don't pay attention to what's actually happening. And that is the rapture is about to occur. And that's why he is playing the game that he's playing. And so he's already here. He's already working. Uh, but he's behind the scenes right now. He cannot be revealed until we're gone. And then, and then shall that wicked be revealed. Did you know that Russia has 11 time zones? Did you know if you drove from one side of Russia and you drove back, you'd travel about a little over 1,100 miles. <laughs> I thought that was incredible. The 1111 just keeps popping up everywhere. I just something. I was just sitting there, and something dawned on me. Something told me, said, "Go see how many time zones uh, Russia has." And I did. And a part of me already knew that that was what I was going to see. I know the United States has four. Uh, if, I think if you count Hawaii, we have five. But look at that. Look at that. And that keeps happening. Um, so I did this uh, math again because somebody keeps asking me, well, 11 months and 11 days, that's November the 11th. No, it's not. <laughs> 11 months from the head of the year of March 17th is the 12th month of Adar, which is February. Um, in another uh, 17 days right here in February, it will be a full 12 months. So this is almost the end of the year. We are almost at the end of the year on the Enoch timeline, starting the year on the day of equal parts, the day Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in the day? And that will occur on March the 16th, the last day, the final Sabbath, setting up the Sabbaths for the, for the following year. If anybody really wanted to know when the Sabbaths were and how to obey that law, that you must find the Sabbath, it will be a sign unto you from me, God said. It will be a sign unto you from me. And the final Sabbath of the year, every single year since creation until God wraps this whole thing up and throws it in the trash and starts new with a new heaven and a new earth after the millennium. It will always be March 16th. And that keeps happening. Um, I had a discussion with somebody. So a pregnancy lasts 280 days or 40 weeks. The ideal pregnancy lasts 40 weeks. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, if you're discussing, when it comes to discussing Jesus, you will always have to count exactly 280 days. Yeah, I know human babies are some born preterm, post-term, but the ideal uh, amount of uh, time for a pregnancy is 40 weeks or 280 days. And guess what I found? That 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 leads up to what I found. I I, it, I I don't know if it's been discussed before, but I thought it was pretty cool. Um, coming up to it, take heed to yourselves, lest and now this is in Luke twenty one thirty four. Take heed to yourselves, lest any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. Who's he talking to? It's in Luke, but he's warning the bride. Keep watching. Don't stop. Don't give up. Don't get drunk. Don't start uh, listening to the world that this day is never going to come. Don't be, where's the promise of your Lord coming? Because nothing's ever changed since the beginning. Don't don't buy into that. It is going to happen. We just, I again, Amos 3, 7, I just feel like God's going to tell us all. All of us are going to know just prior to when it's happening. Until then, we're just going to keep dreaming about this moment coming. For as a snare shall it come upon, uh, sorry, for as a snare it shall come on all them that dwell in the face of the whole earth. What, now, those are the other people. Those are not us. It will come as a snare that this day is not going to come, that it's never going to happen. And we don't have to keep watching. Just be, I, I give up on watching. Uh, and you just, that's simply not the bride. The bride will always continue to watch and not lose heart. This is going, this event is going to take place. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape 
all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. We are going to escape all these things. We will not be here for any part of the tribulation. We will not be here to... to uh, to suffer through any seals. We will be in heaven to watch the first seal being opened. And we will cast out crowns and then John will show up and uh, he'll get to see the entire event and uh, he'll he'll uh, ultimately write Revelation. Yep, still happening. And still happening. Let's see here. Uh, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation when we pray the Lord's Prayer. Please keep us from temptation, but deliver us from evil. Uh, the temptation, the hour of temptation is the hour that we are gone. And the hour that the lie, Satan is in complete control. There's not a single um, uh, God-fearing Christian left on the planet. Although there's going to be a lot as soon as the rapture occurs, there's going to be a bunch. But at this particular moment, they are all cleaned off the planet. And then there's going to be a revival like you have never seen before. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the earth to try them that dwell upon the earth. They will be tested. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. It doesn't say that you'll be losing your salvation. Bride. Take comfort. It says you might lose a crown, but you still will not lose your salvation. You can't tell the plant to jump out of good soil and jump into bad soil and die. Just simply not even, it just can't happen. All right, this year, the day of equal parts is March 16th. It will be the day of equal parts. Um... Uh, you can go as far ahead in time and date as, as 2600, and it will still be the day of equal parts. And it happens again. It happens on September the 26th is the day of equal parts. Um, it happens twice a year. But this was moved from this time, now pre-flood and then post-flood, when God said in Exodus 12 to change it. It was changed to the new year will be March 17th. The last Sabbath, setting the Sabbath up for the following year. Are there not 12 hours in the day? It's the day Lazarus died. All right. Now, I found this. <laughs> That's why, actually, now, now I realize why I took those pictures. Um, you'll see this day of equal parts. It happens on March the 16th, and it happens again on September the 26th. If the rapture should occur because the dead go first and Lazarus uh, dies on the 16th and the dead go first, I, I, I think it's sooner than this. But if it gets to this point, this is the day Lazarus died. The Bible has a verse, and I didn't bring it up, I should have, uh, that says, our, it says something to the effect of 1,290 days. And nobody knows what that means until today I just realized and I took these pictures today or yesterday, took these pictures. Now, September the 26th is also the day of equal parts. It is exactly 1,290 days from March 16th of 2023 to September the 26th, the other day of equal parts, 2026. Did we find totally by accident, the date, the outside date that the uh, saints must be taken out of here. September the 26th is exactly 10 days after um, the Feast of Trumpets. It is exactly, so 10 days, it's, uh, yeah, it's 11 days, and it's, it's right at Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. It falls on right at Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, 1,290 days from the head of the year of March 16th, well, the last day of the year, the, 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 the Sabbath, the final Sabbath, uh, the Day of Equal Parts to the Day of Equal Parts is 1,290 days. thought that was actually pretty cool. Steve Fletcher noticed this, and I took pictures of it to show it to you. That up there in Pisces, right before the band, uh, holding the two fish together and uh, holding, um, was it Cetus? I think it's Cetus, the the, uh, the dragon. 
Venus is meeting up with Jupiter. This is just prior to it on February the 28th. February the 28th is Purim. It is three, uh, 30 days before the cross. The cross happens on March the 30th. March the 30th. This event where Venus and Jupiter are in conjunction happens for about three days until March the 2nd. I guess it would be two days. Two days, three is March, uh, February the 28th, and it passes Jupiter March the 2nd. So I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, Steve Fletcher had uh, a whole deal on that that he, that he put up. And uh, he sees March the 1st, the true new year. Um, I see February the 28th going into March the 1st as Purim, 30 days. Again, not salvational issues uh, like watching his videos. He brings a lot of uh, timelines and dates to his stuff, so it's really interesting to watch. And I and I uh, iron sharpens iron, so I learn a lot. Now, this is what I think. This is okay. I think some maybe I've heard this before, but I was sitting here and I'm like doing the math on all of this. And I showed you how the gestation period, the perfect gestation period of a baby is 280 days. Israel became a nation on May 14th of 1948. Exactly, exactly nine months later. On February the 14th, two days after its first meeting on February the 14th, so they vote the Knesset, the Knesset in. They vote in the Knesset, and two days later, actually, they, 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 this their first vote in the Knesset uh, meaning was to name it a Knesset. That was their first vote was to name a Knesset, and they do this on February the 14th, exactly nine months later. Um, I've heard so many talking about Israel. May 14th is a pivotal day, but the leaves take time to develop. You can plant a seed. Still takes time for it to grow and put forth leaves, and that's what a lot of people are pointing towards. Um, uh, 1949, and we're still within the 80 years. And notice February the 14th, Valentine's Day. Well, that just passed, and 14 days after Valentine's Day is Purim. So I thought that was very interesting. Like um, the dates, how they line up. So you can see here that Purim is on February the 28th. I am looking very intently at February the 28th, which is just a few days away. Um, this will be exactly 11 months and 11 days after the head of the year of March 17th. 11-11, and we're coming up on it in a couple of days. Amos 3.7 promised that God was going to tell us, and we've all kind of thought that perhaps he's going to, you know, give us a dream, a vision, um, uh, this or that. And maybe he has been all along. Maybe that's why we keep seeing 11s everywhere. Maybe he's been telling us all along, you know, and uh, we're kind of like that guy in his house when the flood was r waters were rising and God sent him, a, you know, a boat, uh uh, or a, a, a cop, a boat, and a plane, or a helicopter, and uh, he dies and goes to heaven and says, God, why, why'd you let me die? Why didn't you? He's like, I sent you a police officer to warn you. I sent you a boat, and I sent you a plane. We overlook the blessing because we want that blessing in our own way, and sometimes it's right in front of us, and maybe that's why we keep seeing 11-11, because this in Purim, in fact, is 11 months and 11 days after the head of the year of March 17th. And so... On March the 14th, Mary and Martha send a messenger to Jesus about Lazarus being sick. When the messenger left, Lazarus, in fact, was sick. He had not died yet. When the messenger, it took him two days to walk to Jesus from wherever uh, Lazarus was to wherever Jesus was. It took two days to get there. The messenger arrives. Jesus admits that Lazarus had died, and then 
makes the comment, oh, they're not 12 hours in the day. And in fact, on March 16th, there are 12 hours in the day in Jerusalem, Israel, on that day. And we're look to Jerusalem for as our timekeeper on that day. In fact, it is 12 hours in a day. And also on that day is the date the fourth star of Algenum skirts along the horizon. It will always be a day of equal parts, March 16th. Exodus 12, this now is the head of your year. Lazarus dies on March the 16th. Mary and Martha bury him. They are unclean for seven days. They cannot eat with Jesus. They cannot uh, do anything with Jesus until they performed a ceremony after three days. After the ceremony, they are still unclean. They can't prepare anyone else's food, but they can be around them. But the ceremony performed after three days. And then, this is why everything fits whoops, fits like a, a glove. Whoops. Perfectly. Oh, my goodness. I can't get this up. What in the world? There we go. All right. Everything fits like a glove. And I, I, the end, I show the same on the beginning. Lazarus dies for salvage. Now, Mary and Martha are unclean because they have buried Lazarus the day he died on March the 16th. They don't know that March the 16th is a Sabbath. They have lost their way. They don't have this information. They do not call this the head of the year at all. Only one that knows that this is the head of the year at this point is Jesus. They tell him on March the 16th that Lazarus is sick and Mary and Martha have buried him and Jesus sits still for two days. Why? Because March the 16th in the afternoon and the evening when the sun goes down becomes March the 17th and Jesus is obeying and fulfilling the law and it is Happy New Year's Day and it's mentioned in Exodus 12 again. It is Rosh Hashanah. And on Rosh Hashanah, it is not the same. It is kind of the same, but the Feast of Trumpets is still on September the 15th. It hasn't moved. The only thing that moved was Rosh Hashanah. Everything else stayed the same. However, they will still blow trumpets. Nobody blew trumpets because nobody obeyed the law of Exodus 12. They still don't. They will not call it the head of the year. But they will blow trumpets. Or Jesus, of course, uh, knows that this is the day. Now, when people say, well, we can't go until September because that's when the Feast of Trumpets is and we're not leaving until the last trump. What if they blow trumpets on Rosh Hashanah and we obey God, like it says in Exodus 12, and move the head of the year to March the 17th and they blow trumpets on March the 17th? And this, in fact, is the last trump. Just an idea that I was kicking around. So Lazarus is resurrected on March the 20th. Four days later, he is resurrected. Four days after that, remember, Mary and Martha are unclean. They have to perform a ceremony on the third day. And on the seventh day, they are, unclean, uh, they are clean. And on the eighth day, they prepare a meal. This At this meal is where... Martha is washing the feet of Jesus with her hair, and Mary is upset because Martha is not helping prepare everything, and Jesus said she's already found what she needs, and that is Martha is a representation of the bride, and Mary is a representation of the saints that will have work to do. They will have to wash their robes white. This is also the time one year earlier that Jesus had turned water to wine. This happens on March the 24th. Nisan 8, one day after Mary and Martha are clean, four days after Lazarus is resurrected. It happens two days before the triumphant entry. And four days after the triumphant entry is the date Jesus goes to the cross. The Bible records that after this meal, six days after this meal, Jesus was on the cross. It all ties in perfectly, absolutely perfectly together. And then when you take the flood account, the flood happening on Halloween, and you count from Halloween 150 days, you land again on March 30th. This is the day the water subsides. And in the account, it also says the 
seventh month and the seventeenth day, and for Noah, the seventh month and the seventeenth day would have been Nisan 17. And that was the date that the ark rested, and Jesus rises and defeats death on this same day the ark rested. It all ties in perfectly, perfectly together. All of this ties in too perfectly. So we're still, let's go back to the end of the year before we get to the beginning of the year, and we're still here. For me, Purim, February the 28th. I'm looking very intently at Purim. And then after that, we're looking very closely at the last Sabbath. And it's a matter of fact, the Kaduri prophecy said, or Shoshani, I don't recall which one, but they said, the Sabbath after Jesus will come back. So, was he saying the last Sabbath? Did God reveal to him when the last Sabbath was? And this is the last Sabbath of the year, March 16th. So, um, really getting exciting things that are going on. Again, I hear all the news, I mean the earthquake. Oh, uh, they must have done that with heart. Come on, <laughs> come on. Everything that's going on is just so massive uh, and and it's right there and uh, what they're doing is, uh, and I don't even know, is Satan in control of earthquakes? I don't know, but that right there to me would have been a sign, but all the, the, the train wrecks and all of these other things that are going on, did you know that uh, they're going to sign on this thing? Apparently, that I I didn't show you. Did I? I'm, I might have showed you who. Yeah, I did. I showed you who it was. Um, the who is going to sign on this on February the 27th. It'll be February the 28th in Israel. Purim. So, um, are we being told 1111 11 for a reason? Did did are we going to get to heaven and? God, why didn't you tell me the date? He's like, I did. I've been showing you 11-11 every day for I don't know how long. You know, so don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I don't even know what that phrase means, but my dad said it, so I say it. Um, so just keep watching. You can't lose heart. I mean, there's no way you can't lose heart in this. It's this event's going to happen. It's uh, it's it's all culminating now. We've been watching it for years, and uh, something triggered in all of us about two or three years ago, and uh, we really started paying attention. Like I said, I've been making timelines for a long time, but this one, this timeline, it just all fits like a glove. It's perfect. So keep watching. Keep watching. Repo Man 64, go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. And accept the Lord into your heart. We are out of time. Go read Matthew 6, 5, and 6, why I say it like that. You got This is an intimate moment between you and your Father. Do it by yourself. And uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe, especially to those channels I told you about. And uh, we will see you on the other side. I hope I don't have to make another video. I hope this is my last video. I hope that in three days we're out of here. But if something new comes towards me like that, 1,290 days, that shocked me. I was like, seriously? I never even noticed that. March 16th, the day of equal parts to September the 26th, the day of equal parts, in fact, is 1,290 days. Did we just figure out the date of the... Uh, of uh, the date that Satan is going to go into the temple and proclaim himself to be God. And sometime prior to that now, the rapture must occur. Uh, he can't do that. He's still being held back, isn't he? Every time the, the Holy Spirit is here and people are reviving, um, he, can't, he can't act. So he's, he waits for that moment to, to, to happen. He wants it just as bad as we want it, just as bad as Jesus wants it. So it's not something that he's going to try to take us out on our way up, but... Can't do it. He won't be able to. All right. We'll chat with you later. Repo Man 64.